Hey boys and girls, this is Mr. Newman, and today we are going to grade your practice benchmark. This is the benchmark from last year that was given to fourth grades in December. So hopefully after we go over this, uh, you'll feel pretty good about taking tomorrow's benchmark. So here we go. You should have already done these questions, um, all 25 questions. We're going to go over them, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. All right. So number one, a class uses a stream table to test how flowing water impacts the movement of sand. So you can see this is a, uh, a water faucet being poured onto a table. Um, this is a thick pile of sand and the water is going to come out of this faucet. So this is what the project looks like after the water flows from the project. Um, or after the water flows from the uh, the faucet. So look what happened to the sand. Notice there is a stream of water and the water is pushing the sand down here at the bottom of um, the stream table. So you have a thin pile of sand here at the bottom now. If you look back at before the water flowed, we did not have a thin pile of sand. So three students label the processes that move the sand. Only one student labeled this correctly. So which student has labeled this correctly? And for this one, you should have put student three. So the answer to this, I'll go ahead and just circle it, would be student, student three. Water moves the sand from the top and drops the sand near the bottom. And this has it actually labeled correctly. This is D position or deposition, however you want to say it. This is erosion, when the water moves the sand down here. The movement of this is called erosion. The movement of sand uh, by water, this is erosion, and it deposits all this uh, thin sand down here at the bottom, and that would be deposition. So this one is labeled correctly, so student three. The rest of these are not labeled correctly. All right, let's move on down to number two. Which statement is true? Sunlight and trees are non-renewable resources that cannot be replenished quickly. Well, sunlight and trees are renewable resources, not non-renewable resources, so it can't be A. A is not our answer. Coal and granite are non-renewable resources because they can be replenished quickly. Well, that doesn't go along with non-renewable resources. They cannot be replenished quickly. That's what makes them non-renewable. So it is not B. Sunlight and trees are renewable resources because they can be replenished quickly. Well, that's true. Sunlight and trees are renewable resources, and renewable resources can be replenished quickly. So that is true. Let's look at D. Coal and granite are renewable. No, coal and granite are non-renewable. So that is not true, so it can't be D. So C is our answer for number two. Our number three, it says the number of trees in a forest is decreasing rapidly, which leads to poor air quality. Trees are cut to meet various needs, including the rising demand for paper. Which measure will help save trees? Using more paper products. Well, that would use more trees, so that's not true. Burning used paper, that's not going to help anything. Um, definitely, anytime you burn something, um, especially that's going to cause some sort of uh, black smoke, um, that's not going to be good for the air quality. Um, disposing used paper in dumping grounds. Well, that's not going to help the air quality. And then recycling used paper. Definitely recycling used paper because that means you are going to be cutting down less trees. And more trees means better air quality. So recycling used paper. Number four. And we're going to move this through this rather quickly because there's 25 questions. And I don't want this video to take too long. But it's important that you know the answers to these. Number four, the population of producers, remember producers are plants, remember they get their energy from the sun, producers increase, or excuse me, let me read this again, the population of producers decreases when there is little rain. How, well, how will the decrease in producers most likely impact the ecosystem? So 
basically this says decrease in plants, decrease in plants, which is definitely not beneficial because producers are plants. Producers make their own food. They get their energy from the sun. So what would happen if you had a large decrease in plant life? There would be less bio biodiversity. There will be more biodiversity. The ecosystem will not change. The ecosystem will be more stable. Well, it's definitely not going to be a positive change. So in the word biodiversity means a lot of different forms of life, biodiversity. So a lot of different forms of life. There will be less biodiversity. Yes, I agree with that because this is not a good impact, not a good impact. Um, there will be more biodiversity. That would be a positive impact. The ecosystem will not change. That would be no change at all. And there's definitely going to be something that's going to change if there's less plant life. And D, the ecosystem will be more stable. That's definitely not true. So the answer here is A, there will be less biodiversity. And this is just a fancy word for different forms of life, a lot of different forms of life. So number four is A. All right, number five. A student has two rose plants of the same height with the same size, uh, same pot size, soil, and water. The student places one rose plant in sunlight. The table shows data collected after one week. So here's the rose plant without sun. Here's the rose plant with sun. Without sun, you can see the rose plant is definitely not healthy. With sun, you can see the rose plant looks very healthy. Uh, plant one without sunlight, it did not grow any at all, so it did not increase in height whatsoever. It has yellow leaves. Plant two with sunlight, it grew two centimeters in height and it has green healthy leaves. The student claims plants need energy from the environment to grow. Do the results of this experiment support the claim made by the student? And you should say sure because you can definitely see without sun, this plant is struggling, but with sun, you can see this plant is flourishing. This plant is definitely growing and healthy. So uh, plant one definitely did not grow taller, so that's not true. Yes, plant two grew taller and its leaves were green. Yes, that shows this experiment set, shows this experiment um, does support the claim that, uh, that plants uh, need sunlight. So if you look at plant two, it did grow taller. It has green, healthy leaves. So B, yes, plant two grew taller and its leaves were green. So plants do need energy from the environment, sunlight. All right, number six, examine the food chain from an ecosystem. So it goes flower, aphid, blue jay, falcon. So notice that... These arrows are pointing to where the inner, how the energy is flowing. So the flower energy flows to the aphid. The aphid's energy flows to the blue jay. Blue jay's energy flows to the falcon. Which organism receives energy directly from the sun? Well, if we drew the sun, it would be right here. And the only thing that gets its energy from the sun is a producer, which is a plant. So it would be the flower, D. All right, number seven. Green plants that grow in the rainforest use photosynthesis to survive. Which statement best describes how plants have adapted so that photosynthesis can occur? If you can see this, uh, the plants on the rainforest floor have to be very large leaves because there's a very um, there's a very large canopy in a rainforest. That means there's a lot of tall trees that cover the bottom of the forest. There's a lot of shade in a rainforest. So um, which statement best describes how these plants have adapted so that photosynthesis can occur? Um, the roots have grown deeper. Nope. The stems of plants are less flexible. No. The leaves of the plants are bigger. Now, I agree with that. If the leaves are, the plants are bigger to catch any sunlight that reaches the rainforest floor, that would be a good adaptation for photosynthesis could happen because photosynthesis cannot happen without sunlight. So these leaves have grown much bigger uh, to catch any sunlight that comes through that top canopy of a rainforest. So that is the most likely uh, adaptation. So all of these things might uh, have some effect, but it says best described, so it's going to be letter C. So that was number seven. Number seven is C. All right, number eight, 
In which example do people have a large impact on their physical characteristics of the region? Would it be biking, farming, hiking, or playing with a kite? So there's three of these things that are all kind of similar that do not is not going to have a large impact on the physical characteristics of the region, like biking, hiking, playing with a kite. That's not going to be changing much of the region. But when you start farming, um, you start tilling the land, you test the soil, you have to have irrigation, flat land to farm on. So it's definitely going to be B here. Farming is going to have a large impact on the physical characteristics of a region. Farming. Uh, fertilizer, um, all that stuff. All right, number nine, which image shows, or should be the image shows a food web for a pond? Removing which species would have the greatest impact of the pond food web? So which one's going to have the greatest impact? So any of these is going to have an impact, but what about the greatest impact? Well, look, all these kind of resort back to where does all the energy start from in this food web? Well, it would start from the sun, uh, but that's not an option. But the next thing, the sun gives its energy to the water plant, and everything from there is coming off of the water plant. So without the water plant, this whole food web is definitely going to be affected. So the water plant is going to have the greatest impact on the food web. So that's where all the energy starts in this food web would be the water plant, which gets its energy from the sun, the producer. So when you see a question like this, if you take out the producer in a food web, it's definitely going to affect the entire food web the most, the producer. Remember, producers are plants. All right, number 10. A student creates a food chain. A student creates a food chain. Um, why is a food chain the student creates incorrect? Remember the arrows in a food chain. The arrows, the arrows show how uh, the um, how the energy flows. In this, if you see, if you look like, for example, these two right here, grass and grasshopper. This is saying that the grass gets its energy from the grasshopper. And you know that's not true. Grass gets its energy from the sun because it's a producer. That's the sun. So grass does not get its energy from a grasshopper. No, that would make grass a consumer. And grass is not a consumer. It's a producer. So... The food chain shows energy moving in a circle. No. The food chain shows matter moving in a circle. No. The food chain shows the grass receiving energy from the grasshopper. Yes, that is definitely not true. It's definitely not true. Grass does not receive energy from any sort of animal. Grass receives energy only from the sun. Okay? It's a producer and it makes its own food. All right, number 11, a student observes water inside the crack of a rock. When the temperature cools to freeze the water, what will the student likely observe? What will likely observe? So if water gets inside the crack of a rock, remember when water freezes, it expands. We talked about a little bit of that in class, about what happens when water uh, freezes. It expands, and if it's inside a crack, it will widen that crack for sure. So the crock size, the, excuse me, the crock, the rock size will increase. No, that's not true. The crack in the rock will disappear. Nope. The crack size will increase. I definitely agree with that. The rock will lose its minerals. Nope, that's not going to be true. So anytime water freezes, it will expand. And if it's inside the crack of a rock, that crack will also probably expand as well, cracking the rock even more. All right, number 12, most people today use maps on computers instead of maps on printed paper. Which statement describes an improvement computer maps provide? And one of the biggest reasons that uh, maps on phones or GPSs are much better than paper maps is because roads are changing all the time. They're building new roads, changing uh, routes to different places, making places easier to get to, faster to get to, shortcuts. So... Changes on roads are put on maps faster, definitely, definitely. Um, you could just upload a new map to your phone or do an update, and there you got the new roads on the map. If you have to print off a map every time they updated a road, then uh, it would be impossible to stay updated on all the different road changes because they're changing roads all the time. Infrastru infrastructure um, is always happening. So they're always building new roads, making roads better, making, uh, making places uh, faster to get to um, by improving the roads. 
All right, number 13. It says the model of a food chain is shown. Which table correctly classifies the organism's role in the food chain? So we have a carrot. Carrot gives its energy to the rabbit. Rabbit gives its energy to the hawk. So which one is labeled correctly? So carrot is a producer. No, carrot is, oh yeah, carrot is a producer. Sorry, carrot is a producer because it does, it's a plant, it makes its own food. That's true. Rabbit is a producer. No, that's not true. Rabbits are consumers. Rabbits can't make their own food. They have to eat carrots and things like that. Um, they are herbivores. So not going to be A. C, actually let's look at B next. Carrot is a producer, yes. Rabbit is a consumer, yes. Hawk is a decomposer, no. Hawk is not a decomposer. Hawk is definitely going to be a consumer as well. It's a carnivore, so it's not B. C, carrot, decomposer, no. Carrot is not a decomposer, it's a producer. Carrot, producer, yes. Rabbit, consumer, yes. Hawk, consumer, yes. So that is our answer, D. That is our answer. So you just got to go through each of these and see which one works. So, the answer is D. Number 14, studying fossils can help researchers answer th which three questions? What characteristics did extinct organisms have? How did characteristics in living organisms form over time? What will organisms look like in the future? What type of environment existed at a location in the past? Or which areas... Which areas have the most animals in the world today? So studying fossils can help research answers which three questions? So we have to pick three of these. So what characteristics did instinct organisms have? That's going to be true. You can definitely tell what characteristics um, instinct organisms have by looking at their fossils. How did characteristics in living organisms form over time? That's going to be true. What will organisms look like in the future? That's not going to be it. You're not going to be able to tell that from a fossil. So no. Uh, what type of environment existed at a location in the past? That would be true. Because you could tell definitely if you find a fish fossil on top of a mountain, you can assume that there used to be water there a long time ago. Which areas have the most animals in the world today? So fossils are not going to be able to tell you that. Which areas have the most animals in the world today? Fossils tell you about what was in the past. So A, B, and D for number 14. A, B, and D. All right, number 15. Which example shows organisms changing the environment and helping other organisms? All right, so remember, changing the environment and helping other organisms. Cows eat most of the grass in one area, leading to erosion. Beavers build dam, which keeps water away from other areas. Giant African snails destroys plant crops planted by humans. Alligators dig holes to collect water other animals use to drink. So remember, um, all of these things are organisms changing the environment, but not a lot of them are helping other organisms. The only one that has something helping another organism will be D, because other animals use the water to drink. So if alligators dig holes, the holes collect water, rainwater, other animals could drink out of that hole, a little watering hole for an animal. So that would be a positive thing for an animal. So that is an alligator changing the environment and animals drinking uh, from the holes that they dig. All right, we're going to use this chart to answer number 16, 17. A student records observations about two scientific tests in tables. So, test one, temperature 70 degrees, wind high, water high, heel shape, very high, sharp heel, and then end shape heel is very, it's flattened off. Test two, temperature 70 degrees, wind is low, water is low, Heel is very sharp and high, and then heel shape in did not change. Which questions or which question is the student likely testing? How does weathering by wind and water impact the heel shape? How does heel shape impact the temperature? How does weathering by glaciers impact heel shape? How does heel shape impact the 
amount of wind and water. So this is definitely going to be answer A. How does weathering by wind and water impact heel shape? But you can see the wind is high, the water is high, and look how it changed the heel shape. This is going to be your best answer here. Number 16 is A. The only other reasonable answer you could be D, but it says how does the heel shape impact the amount of water? And we're not we're not looking at the heel shape compared to changing these. So this would be kind of the chart going backwards, and that is not the case in this example. Number 17, which statement best describes the results of the test? Which statement best describes the results of the test? We're going back to this chart for number 17. Temperature change causes deposition that changes the heel shape. No, I don't see any deposition in this chart, so not going to be A. B, water and wind cause erosion that change the heel shape. That could definitely be that could definitely be true. Let's read all these. The heel shape causes deposition that increases the amount of water and wind. Nope. And then D, the heel shape causes erosion that increases the amount of water and wind. That's not going to be it either, so the answer is definitely going to be A. The water and wind cause erosion that change the heel shape. All right, moving on to number 18. Almost done. It says the student claims that finding one fossil of a fish on a mountain provides the mountain was once a grassland. Is the student correct and why? Well, if you find a fish on a mountain, it's not going to give information that was a grassland. It's going to give information that there was once water there. So I would definitely go with no, the student is not correct. So that rules out C and D. No, the fish fossil gives evidence there was once water on the mountain. Yes, I agree with that. No, the fish fossil gives evidence the grassland was once flat. Possibly, but that's definitely not going to be the best answer. It's definitely going to be A, number 18. So if you find a fish fossil on a mountain, that's a good indicator that there used to be water on top of that mountain. All right, number 19. Which two kinds of animals will survive best if grasslands become colder over time and stay covered in snow? Well, look at the animals that are offered here. White rabbits, frogs, white foxes, brown turtles, brown hippopotamuses. So two kinds of animals will best survive. Well, these are white rabbits, white foxes, so they're going to blend in with their environment very well. And they're covered with fur to keep them warm. So if it becomes colder, these two have the best chance of surviving. The white fox and the white rabbits. Turtles. The hippopotamus, the frogs, all uh, do not have a lot of fur. Um, they're not going to blend in with their environment very well, and they're probably going to have a hard time surviving in the cold weather, the very cold weather. Number 20, which statement best describes how plants perform photosynthesis? Plants use energy from the sun to create minerals to grow and reproduce. I agree with that. Plants use energy from eating food to get minerals and to grow. No, they don't eat food. Plants do not eat food. Plants use energy from the sun to create carbon. Nope. Plants use energy from the food to get oxygen. No. Plants release oxygen as a byproduct of photosynthesis, and that's what we breathe in. So that's one of their waste products, but they do not need to get oxygen. They release oxygen. So the answer to number 20 is A. They use energy from the sun to create minerals to grow and reproduce because plants are producers. Number 21, a company needs to get rid of toxic liquids without harming plants and animals. The table shows three possible solutions. So solution one, the pipe moves liquids into a nearby pond. Problems, soil pollution, polluted water pond. Number two, a well buried deep underground in Solid rock holds the liquids. Expensive, may cause earthquakes. So three, a treatment plant removes harmful materials and then expensive. So you have 
Um, a company, remember, that needs to get rid of toxic liquids without harming plants and animals. The table shows three possible solutions. And you can see the, uh, the cons of all three solutions right here. Which solution should the company use? So number one is going to cause soil pollution, um, polluted pond water. Number two, expensive may cause earthquakes. And number three is just is a money situation. So I think the company, and this is just the best answer here, all three of these could possibly be answers, but which one is the best? The company should use three only because it's not it's going to have the least impact on the environment. You definitely don't want to cause earthquakes, and you definitely don't want to cause more pollution. So number three is the only one that's not going to affect the environment. Number 22. Uh, many industrial pig farms turn pig waste into liquid and spray it onto fields as fertilizer for plants. How can this method impact oceans? Well, anytime that you use fertilizer, it's good for the grass and a lot of times good for crops. But if there's a lot of rain, that could cause flooding in that uh, the fertilizer could definitely flow as runoff. So here... It would be number 22 would be B. The waste can enter waterways as runoff and flow into oceans. Anytime fertilizer gets into a water stream, that is not good for the uh, plant life. Um, it is not good for the animal life that lives into that water source. All right. Two more, three more questions. Number 23, a student labels a cat as a consumer in a food web. Which characteristic shows the cat as a consumer? Remember, the cat eating another organism. So the cat receives energy from eating other organisms. There it is right there. A. Cat receives its energy by eating other organisms. So if a cat would eat a mouse, for example, um, that is the cat being a consumer. A cat is not a producer. It does not make its own food. It does not get its energy from uh, the sun. It does not get its energy from water. It gets its energy from eating other organisms. Number 24, the picture shows a tall rocky cliff. Which picture shows the change that occur on the cliff due to gravity? Well, what could happen is, remember, gravity is the force that is pulling things to earth, and definitely it could cause this to break off eventually. So gravity could pull that down, and this could cause this to crack, and then this piece of the cliff would fall to the earth, which would be letter B. The rest of these all have the cliff basically being the same. So the answer is B. You can see where that piece of the cliff has fallen off, and probably due to gravity. Number 25, last question. Oil takes thousands of years to form underground, under the ground. Which statement best describes oil? Well, oil is non-renewable. Remember, it takes a long, long, long time uh, to replenish itself. So oil is non-renewable. It's a fossil fuel. Fossil fuels are non-renewable. So it's not A or B. Let's read C and D. Oil is non-renewable resource because it forms over thousands of years. I agree with that. D, oil is non-renewable resource as gathering oil does not impact Earth. It definitely impacts Earth, so it is not D. The answer is C. All right, guys, that is the end of science. I know this video took a while, but this is a good uh, study guide for tomorrow's benchmark. Let me know if you got any questions. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. See you, bye.